Okay. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, as you know, we call this tea time, time to talk. So I have my tea here and I'm actually drinking and you have yours, which is great. I love sharing tea, don't you? I love, I love it too. It's such a nice way to bond. It's and cool you know, tea, tea, tea means different. Um, tea is so different to different people. You know, the way you like it, it, it it's not the same for everyone. <laughs> Absolutely true. You know, some but... like it, some like it, some like it cold. <laughs> some like <laughs> it, you know, <laughs> like so many other yes. things. So today I'm drinking white tea. So um, for the audience, I just want, I know you know this because we've spoken about it, but white tea is one of the teas that's so high in antioxidants and it's not too acidic. And uh, mine is uh, not caffeinated. So, you know, it's a really nice, relaxing, mellow tea, but it's great to get all these antioxidants in your system as an anti-cancer thing to do. So, um, and just sitting and drinking mm -hmm. tea, that's good for you too, just relaxing. So, yeah. so I'm joined today by I'm Sana and um, I've known Sana for a while now. And she actually um, is here today while on active treatment. So we decided that it would be a great way to reach out to people to talk while you're in the midst of going through treatment, not waiting till afterwards when everything is done and talking about what it was like. And I really admire your courage to do that and your willingness to do that. We just happen to have a very good day today, but as any cancer patient under treatment with chemo knows, not every day will you be feeling exactly. like doing an interview? <laughs> You know, so, but I'll let you talk about that. I thought we could start out just with a short synopsis of like your type of cancer, when you got diagnosed and what your routine is for those people who are wondering if you have the same one they have, you know? Yeah, so um, it was in the uh, month of March. It was Ramadan for, you know, the month that we passed. Um, and I was at work and I got a phone call. I do my regular mammograms every year. I've been doing for almost 15 years. And um, I went for a regular mammogram and I got a call saying that I would need to come for a biopsy because they they feel that they have seen something. So um, my husband was out of town. So I decided to just, I thought it was it'll just be regular and there's nothing wrong. And so I just went for the biopsy and about four or five days later I get a call at work saying that <clears throat> they um the tumor is uh, that they they think that it's cancer and that I should come and see the breast surgeon mm -hmm. so um I was diagnosed with a triple negative breast cancer my ki 67 score was about 80 percent so which meant that chemotherapy would work best um on me um the ERPR and the AGR2 were all negative for me. The FISH test was also negative. And later on, I found out that the genetic test was also negative for me, luckily. Mm -hmm. uh, but with triple negative breast cancer, it is it is an aggressive sort of cancer, which, which grows um, much more faster than other cancers, breast cancers, I guess. And that's why they started the chemotherapy almost immediately within five days. Mm hmm you got started really so, wow yeah it, it it yeah so i met the breast surgeon the same day the oncologist the next day and um yeah with 5 days i in between i just had time to get my eyebrows microbladed just before my chemo started <laughs> wow. and other than that yeah and that was also in a days i can't i can't remember doing that but uh yeah you bring but up I remember... so interesting things. One, we do get amnesia for that period because it's also shocking that you're just kind of on autopilot. But I'm impressed that you even knew to go get your microblade because I guess a lot of patients realize later I'm going to lose all of my hair. Even yeah. My eyebrow. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I think after I was diagnosed, two of my, one of my aunts was diagnosed and another person I know was diagnosed. The first thing I said to them was immediately get, get your microblading done. Because I know, I know your self-esteem suffer, suffers when you lose your hair, mm -hmm. when you lose your eyebrows, your eyelashes. And mm -hmm. I would definitely ask them to do it. And for me, my sister was the one who pushed me to do it. She made, she made the appointment and... Yeah. So it was good. But I remember when I first got the call that I have cancer, um, I was sitting at my desk um, at work and 
there are two thoughts that crossed my mind. I think the first thought was, will I have to quit my work? Mm -hmm. Will I have to leave my job? And the second thing that popped in my head was, I don't want to die. I, mm -hmm. you know, I love life. I haven't done what I, all that I want to do. And I hope I'm not going to die. And these two thoughts were the only ones on my mind. Mm, mm. And after that, I, I can't remember. It was just a lot, a lot of, lot of pain. It took me, um, I think, four or five days to get used to the fact that I have cancer. Mm -hmm. um, I kept denying it. I kept calling back the laboratory and saying that, are you sure you have the name right? Mm -hmm. um, is, it, is it really Sana Amjad? Can mm -hmm. you check the date of birth? Mm -hmm. And then I guess it uh, took me some time to accept it. It was just, it was as if my heart, somebody had pierced my heart and like stabbed my heart and it, it was hurting. Mm -hmm. um, it was very, very painful. My husband was out of town. I didn't tell him he was traveling for work. I, I didn't want to break the news to him on the phone because I knew he would be devastated. Mm -hmm. Um, we broke the news to my parents. My sister actually broke the news to them on a on a conference call. I was there. I was just quiet. I heard my mother howling at the back as if, you know, as if she just mm. I, I in it, it was painful. It was painful to hear her mm. the way she kind of collapsed. Mm. And I think in that moment, I realized we are three. We are three daughters, but I realized how close I had become to her after mm. I'd gotten married and how mm. much she depended on me because both of us, we don't we don't have a lot of friends. Mm. So for me, my best friend is her. Mm. She she is my best. Yeah. And for her, I am the first person she calls if she needs something. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, over the years we we kind of just yeah. relied on that. So I guess she felt and and Bobby, she felt that, you know, something bad is going to happen to me. And, mm -hmm. and the thought of outliving your own children is probably mm -hmm. the worst thought ever, you know? Right. right. Mm -hmm. So that's when we broke the news to them. And then the next day, my father just um, appeared. Mm -hmm. he, he he came here. Huh. Uh, he didn't uh, tell us. He just He just came. He said uh, he came because he wanted to be here with me. He wanted to know what was happening. And then he also wanted to be here for my husband because my husband had lost his father recently. Oh. And um, he he didn't want him to, you know, sort of face this on his own. So in about three days when my husband came, I sat him down. I held his hand and I, I, I remember being... Uh, braver than I thought I would be. I held his hand and I said to him, I swear to you, I will fight the life out of this mm -hmm. and you won't have to live without me. Mm -hmm. um, and the second thing I said to him was that if I swear something happens to me and if you get married again, I swear I'll never forgive you. <laughs> 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 and started laughing and I thought okay you know we'll be fine <laughs> we'll be there fine you are with your humor already I mean it's so amazing how when you got the diagnosis it distilled down that's how our how it is for us it distills down to this is my life right now I'm working do I have to quit this and then also am uh, I my, am I facing death that immediate fear so many people who get the diagnosis are relating to this because that's a cancer diagnosis does that it's not like other diagnoses it's immediately you think that but then also you went through what I call healthy denial because you're saying no they had to have gotten it wrong you call back even like check that make sure you have the right that's so healthy <laughs> why is that healthy because our brain really can't absorb it all at once. It would be like, actually, your mom's visceral reaction was her just absorbing the fear all at once like that and the pain of it. And she showed that, you know, with her emotional reaction. And what you were doing, because you're the one receiving the diagnosis, you were saying, I'm not sure. Wait, wait, wait. Let's make sure this is right. But then yeah. after that, what a beautiful gesture. Your father just appears. You know, and he's yeah. thinking of both of you. That's so amazing to me that he was thinking also of your husband and what he had just been through. Yeah. That's amazing. And since those three weeks that he was here, 
um, he doesn't talk a lot. Um, and I remember on this same sofa I'm sitting, he would sit here all day long. I would grow, I would go and hide either in my bedroom or, or in the washroom and I would cry my eyes out. I would howl and call and I don't know what, like whatever that I did. And then I would wipe my tears. I would come out and he would still be sitting here. Mm. And, and it would give me such a sense of calm. Mm. And I would just lie down here on this chaise lounge and he would be sitting here. We wouldn't be talking. Mm. But just the fact that he was sitting here yeah. was so calm, calming for, for that time period that I was going through the pain of accepting that I now have cancer. Yes, yes, yes. You were in that acceptance phase, but that's so powerful that it doesn't take words. It take, took his presence. Don't always yeah, have words. Just words are presence. not always there, but how powerful his presence for you. Yeah. That's and, and he followed me to my oncologist, to my chemotherapy, to mm -hmm. to every possible um, place that I had to go. He insisted. He mm -hmm. he he just wanted to, to be there. Um, and it's not that he even went into the oncologist's room to to you know go and sit with me and listen to her. He would wait outside. Mm -hmm. He would sit in the waiting area, giving me my space to, you know, go and walk free or whatever. But he was just around. Mm. I think that is, I mean, that's, that's him, you know, that's what he's done huh. for us as, as, as children all his life. Mm -hmm. Such a watchful, uh, parent, watchful, loving, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah, I always tell um, my mother that, you know, God made our father instead of making a hundred thousand mothers uh, because only mothers can feel like this you know yeah mothers are connected with their kids like this but yeah. god didn't make a hundred thousand mothers so he could make my dad i believe it <laughs> yeah because he has that in him you know we yeah. should discount that this could happen with a man as well you know that yes. connection with yes. their children that's beautiful yeah. Beautiful. Speaking of God, <laughs> uh, a lot of people get asked some questions when they first diagnosed. Yesterday, I had a whole group on people telling me the things they were asked that they kind of went, what? <laughs> you know, like, because, you know, others don't really know what to say, or they're not really thinking. And it's only from the point of view of the cancer patient, you know, what's an appropriate and kind and thoughtful thing to say or ask. But people are also just curious, but you got asked a question by your sister, right? Like, um, yes, why, why do you, which is, no, it's a normal question. Yes. Yeah. Why, yeah. We were, we were just, yeah. I remember this. I remember telling you this. Um, <clears throat> she said to me, um, do you ever question God? Why you, why you got this? Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I said, um, uh, I said to her, no, I, I've never, even when I was diagnosed, I never questioned God. Why? Mm -hmm. um i said the reason i don't question god why is that because i i believe my faith is so strong um that we don't question the existence of god mm -hmm. so why am i questioning something that you know i got it and somebody else didn't and why why was i the one who got it mm -hmm. and for cancer i have to and if if i think and i find try to find some logical answer for it that would be facts Mm -hmm. I'm relying here on faith. I don't have to go via facts. My faith is that I got this because there that, that he wants me to experience something or because he wants me to go through this journey to find something else or there is a bigger purpose. Mm -hmm. um, I also thought to myself that um, <clears throat> when God gave me so many blessings, I never said to him why. Mm. Why are you giving me so many blessings? Mm -hmm. um, when he gave me this, I shouldn't, I should accept it. Mm -hmm. I should accept it without resenting it and also accept it that something good will come out of it. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that I, I did was every single day I prayed to God that God, please make this journey easy for me. Just mm -hmm. make it easy for me. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't know that he was not only going to make it easy for me, he was going to make it beautiful. Oh. He, I, Cindy, I can't tell you that today after being 
on chemo for three months. And I'm not saying that I have not suffered. I'm not saying that cancer patients don't suffer. I'm just only talking about my own journey. Mm -hmm. To me, this pain has been worthwhile mm -hmm. because I would not trade this journey with anybody. Mm -hmm. Because for me, it has been beautiful. Mm -hmm. The way I have grown as a person, the way that I have expanded my horizons, my connections with people, the way my personality kind of has a calmness that only I can feel because previously I was so hyper. Mm. Um, it, it's it's just been beautiful. Mm. It's such a paradox, the, you know? It's such a, to think that a painful, scary possibly devastating and at times physically painful and difficult because I know what you've been going through but then to see the beauty that that paradox that's your faith that's beautiful that's that's a testament to your faith I think that's what's kept me going is the fact that I I I was always questioning that I was always questioning that God has given me this for a reason so I kept looking for 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 that answer instead mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i started i remember you had asked me to start writing a journal mm -hmm. uh, of what i eat every day mm -hmm. and somehow that journal just became not not a diary of what i eat every day but what i kind of feel every day <laughs> so i was just i just yeah, i just started writing mm -hmm. um and without even realizing one day i started writing 10 things that cancer has given me mm -hmm. and I remember the number one thing that I wrote um, in that was that I've always had thin hair mm -hmm. I've, all, all my life I've had thin hair mm -hmm. and I thought you know I have the reason I've lost my hair is because God wants me to have a new set of hair probably <laughs> thicker than the one I had before and that's the reason I don't have hair now and and that went on I thought I'd jot two or three but I went on to 12 or 13 <laughs> Incredible. And, you know, and yeah. I think one of the most beautiful ones that I would like to share is that I love the fact, I love the way my husband cares for me. Mm. Uh, and in my culture, they say that you you get to know um, about, uh, about a good woman when her husband is without a job and you get to know about a good man when his uh, wife is ill. Mm. Mm. that's beautiful yeah mm -hmm. so and he and I know he's not he's n not so expressive and he's not so romantic but the in the way that he has showed me his love mm -hmm. I am so proud that my children have evidenced that mm -hmm. so tomorrow so tomorrow, if their loved ones, God forbid, their mother-in-law or somebody they know, God forbid, goes mm -hmm. through cancer, they know exactly how to take care of that person, how to be mm -hmm. kind to that person, how to be a husband or a father or, you know, a friend to that person. Mm -hmm. And that experience, they are witnessing that. They're witnessing their father take care of their mother. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's a beautiful experience for life. Mm something they would have not experienced if their mother didn't have it right and something that couldn't be taught by teaching it's it's taught it by just they're in yeah. the midst of it, seeing him, how he loves you seeing how the what's going on in the household and how you're dealing too i mean they've gotten to see your ability to be courageous enough to also be vulnerable you know i just want to say one little thing for the for the viewers here there is um I am a big fan of an old classic book called The Survivor Personality. And one of the things they see in people who survive, who are resilient, is their flexibility, even to have depth, which you just showed us with your faith, and humor. Because you also took the depth of your faith and then also brought it up to, and by the way, I had bad hair. So <laughs> he's really awesome. Yeah. Being replaced my hair. See that real human practical humor as well. 
that shows that kind of flexibility that we see in a lot of survivors. It's an amazing thing. Survivors of all kinds of things, not just cancer. So yeah. but it's because yeah. that's how you can deal with life. But this this beautiful thing you're mentioning where, again, it's the way your husband is and it's the the closeness and how he has it's it's increased and enhanced you know, the relationship and his love for you, but it, your sons get to witness that now. Well, no witness. better gift, right? Yeah. You know, they, yeah, it's amazing. Amazing. While we're on that, we'll get to nutrition eventually. But, you know, while we're talking about that, I just... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we will. But I, I remember your... Um, you have a way, I call you the ambassador of hope because you have a way of using things that could be very scary to help people with their fear. For example, you are going without a wig and without a hat and without a scarf. And you recognize, for example, when you walked in the chemo uh, uh, for your appointment, walked in the office one day, there was a young woman who saw you and you could tell that it gave her a little fear, like, oh my gosh, is that gonna happen to me, right? Do you remember that situation yeah. and what you did? I do. I do. <laughs> I do. I, um, my, my oncologist asked me to, she gave me the name of a place where I could go and buy a wig. And I swear, I went there. I bought yeah. the wig. It was an expensive wig. Yeah. And I haven't even taken it out of the bag. Mm. I, I haven't. Um, and when I went to get my head shaved, I had just um started to lose like a bit of hair and um i thought that this would be the moment where i would just collapse and break down break down it would be terrifying but i sat there so calm and the barber he shaved off my uh, hair and i don't know i i walked out of there i i came home and um my I had gone with my sister. I came home and the first thing um, I see is my husband walk up to me and kiss my forehead. <laughs> and he said, I'm so proud of you. Oh. It's like, wow. you know, this is it. We, that's, that's the validation I needed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, since then, I, I didn't, um, I didn't cover. I didn't cover my head and I've been going everywhere everywhere like this and mm -hmm. I remember I have a I have a few stories around this mm -hmm. um I remember going to my third chemotherapy and um I dress up for all my chemotherapies I I dress up nicely I I plan I plan my dress one night before I always have my nails painted because I I want to it's like a to-do thing on my task list so I get dressed Mm -hmm. and not having having hair or not having to blow dry my hair is not stopping me from getting dressed yes <laughs> <laughs> so I I was dressed up for my third chemotherapy I walk in I sign in and and just from the corner of my eye I saw a woman go you know just like that and she held on to her husband's hand and I thought to myself I think she's she got scared looking at me mm -hmm. the way that I walked in Mm -hmm. and just as I was passing by I said to her as long as you're holding hands you will be fine oh, so nice. and I and I went in and I went in for my chemotherapy a few days later I think uh, a few weeks later probably on my fifth or sixth chemotherapy I was I was um, standing um, outside the hospital just um, waiting for the for the valet to bring my car from the parking and uh, <clears throat> I see a woman waving from me from inside so I I went in and I, I didn't recognize her at first and then I realized it was the same woman who I'd said this to uh, to when I was going for my chemo mm -hmm. and um, she said to me she said to me hi how are you doing and we exchanged notes on our cancer and you know, she was going through radiation. She had already had a surgery and we exchanged numbers and we started talking. Um, and then before we, we even knew it, we were talking for like 45 minutes and mm -hmm. we were exchanging notes. We were talking to each other. We just kind of became friends. Mm -hmm. um, and now sometimes we talk for hours on the phone. Mm, goodness, that's great. Broke the barrier here and everything for her. That's beautiful. And I gave her 
I gave her a little basket and I told her it I call it the basket of love. I put in all the things that I'm using, like my face oil, which I call Botox, uh, Botox in a bottle. I gave her eye mask and some candy and um, some serum for the face and it's a little little thing small small things to eat and to for skin or whatever and I said you use them you use this basket and whenever you're ready whenever you're ready to pass on and share this basket fill it up with whatever you whatever gave you comfort and pass it on to another cancer patient oh nice and this, this was the third time that we had met mm -hmm. and I had not reached out to any support group mm -hmm. I had not reached out to any support group because I felt like I needed to find my own you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to talk to people who had already been through this journey mm -hmm. I, I wanted to find my own support group so I think God helped me with that that I found her yeah, she and was after her one, right yeah she was number yeah. one she was number one yeah and and then, you know, it just it just so happened that that triggered. And then I met Ivana, who got uh -huh. married last month. Mm -hmm. And he, I met her just when I was doing my blood test. And she said to me, I can't believe that you you are going with this shaved head yeah. and wearing a bandana. And I said, you know, if you want, I can help you. And we can both um, go around the mall with our shaved head. <laughs> shopping, have some coffee, and maybe that'll give you some strength. Right. And... Uh, we became friends and luckily she had her chemo every Wednesday and I used to drop by sometimes actually every time and yes um, two days back she finished her last chemo and she's yeah. going on a holiday I'm so thrilled oh, for her mm -hmm. and she is so 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 brave every time that I would go and visit her during her chemo she would be working on her laptop either redoing her flat or renovating something or you know she was full of life Mm. very very sweet and and she was crying the day she finished her chemo and I can so relate to that because you you get used to that you get attached to this it's an it's an emotional journey mm -hmm. and even if it's the last one even if it was happiness uh tears of happiness it is tears of joy um sadness too yeah. because you're letting go of that one period of time Mm -hmm. and you so, bond yeah, with these was... people too you know was there there was a third yeah. person who joined your 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 impromptu yes. support group right <laughs> yeah, and she was uh she was uh, her name's Karine and she's she is going through cancer the third time mm -hmm. this is a third time round but Cindy you know for a person who's going through a cancer a third time round I've never seen sadness on her face. There's mm -hmm. always a smile. Mm -hmm. Her daughter is always with her. Her husband is around all the time with her. She she has such a smiley face. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah. and she never, um, you know, what I learned from her was that she never discusses her symptoms that, oh, this is happening to me or that is happening to me. Whatever she comes out of her mouth is so positive. Mm-hmm. That, that is really beautiful. And I think God just gave me that sort of support group. Mm -hmm. mm. It looks like it looks like that's what happened. You know, you yeah. gathered them as you went. And it's just as I, as I as I went along. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have to look for them. They we just found each other. Yeah, it's beautiful. You know, and it really started out with just this overcoming fear overcoming the fear yeah. of losing your hair, shaving your head, like instead of pulling back yeah. and fighting, you went forward and said, I'm, I'm just going to, yeah, I guess it's happening, you know, and yeah, then, this you is me. And I yeah. guess. but you have such strong, I guess if I, don't yeah. think, if, if I think that I, if I was wearing a wig, I don't think um, the connection would have come through. Mm -hmm. So I think I, this then this is another thing it just helped me to make better connections but on the other hand I've had some stories where you know I was once getting my nails done and I um I went I I, I finished and I got in the lift and um there were three men in the lift and they were uh, talking to talking to each other in um in my uh in my 
uh, native language, which Thank is Urdu. And okay. Yeah, and we were talking to each other and I was facing the lift. Um, and one guy said right behind me, I, I could actually feel him staring at the back <laughs> of my head. <laughs> so, and he says, and he says uh, to his friend, I bet she's doing some hair treatment. <laughs> um, and and at that moment, the lift door just kind of opened because we stopped at where I needed to get out. And I turned around and I said, bro, it's called chemotherapy. <laughs> and I just walked out. You can see the look on his face. <laughs> I, I didn't wait to see that. I didn't wait to see that. I just said it. I, mean, he, I know that he was speaking. But his mouth was left a bit open, but I, I didn't. I'm sure. First, just, because he didn't know you knew the language, he didn't think necessarily. Yeah. yeah. But then you heard you, he sang it out loud, so it's for everyone to hear. Yeah. So you didn't breach a yes. conversation, but you said, "Yeah, this is what the treatment is." <laughs> the treatment is. And then once, uh, just last week, my sister was visiting, and um, we decided to take her out for uh, lunch. And it was a nice, uh, it was a nice uh, cafe. It was full. It was full of people. And right across to us, there was a table full of six men. And uh, two of them just kept staring at me. And normally if people stare at me, I stare back and then they look away. But it didn't happen uh, the same way this time. They just did. They just kept looking. <laughs> <clears throat> so, <laughs> so I wanted to go to the washroom. And in order to go to the washroom, I had to cross their uh, table. Um, so I, I passed their table and, and these two men are still looking at me. And um, I I say to one of them, uh, I don't look that scary, do I? <laughs> um, uh, and he say, and he, he was a baldy too. And he does this and he says, oh, no, no, of course not. Uh, is this new fashion? Um, and I said, yes, it is. It's called cancer. Mm. <laughs> wow, that's so good. <laughs> Yeah. And this guy says, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but only you your way. I you, you know you said it with a smile. And so they can take it, you know, they can receive what yeah, they Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I just, it, these moments are, they happen. They're happening, but you're, you're, okay. you're, you're, you know, you're receiving them and doing them and it's bringing awareness. That's why I call you an ambassador of hope because you're, you're out there. You can't help it. It's happening. And, uh. So interesting. No, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not ashamed of it. In fact, yeah. I, 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 I think that the only way to enjoy it is to embrace it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I think of it this way that I save thirty minutes of washing and shampooing and conditioning you and blow drying my hair. Yes, you do. Yeah, <gasps> yeah, and I can just walk out <laughs> like yeah, that. The freedom. The freedom of that. So <laughs> yeah, the freedom. I know some of the listeners are going to be wondering where the nutrition is because I always have nutrition too. So ah, yes. you have done, like, I love what you've done with nutrition. You've done everything that I just think is important, you know, as far as we went over like antioxidants and anti-inflammatory foods and, you know, low glycemic index and, you know, the low sugar. Uh, we went over everything and you already ate in a beautiful way it generally even took that much tweaking of your diet but you enhanced and increased some of these wonderful foods and some of the yeah. pictures i got from you were great like i'll never forget the sea bass story you know the time yeah. you yeah. laid out that sea bass for your family you went and got a fresh one and then you laid. and that's nice because your family likes to eat this way too i mean you've got to please two boys and another male that's not easy to do but, you know, it's, it's very yeah. amazing what you've done and you're juicing. I mean, what do you, what kinds of things would you share with the patients who are listening? Cindy, the great thing with you was that when I started with you, you, you didn't change my diet entirely. Mm -hmm. You, you look at what I was eating on a daily basis and you made small, small tweaks in that area, which helped me to stick to that. Mm -hmm. And then you suggested a few changes and that's what helped me the most because I was not going out of my way but I was ma making some healthy changes mm -hmm. so I remember um, when you shared the sunflower um, sheet with me which had all the nutrition mm -hmm. items um, it was it was my first chemo or my second key it was my first chemo uh, and uh, I had gone for my first chemo and 
that day I was I was on steroids and everything and I was I was resolved that I would do one hour of walking and I I went for a walk my father was still visiting my husband was still around um and while I was walking I said to myself how how can I make this um you know the toxins of chemo how can I counter this mm. how can I just tell it I mean, I don't want to use a bad word, but <laughs> as how how do I get this to get out of my life? Yeah, yeah. Um, by yeah. replacing it, by replacing it with flushed out, yeah, by replacing it with something good to eat. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what happened. While walking, I walked to the. Uh, there is a supermarket in my community, and while I finished my walk, I went to the supermarket. I got fresh asparagus. Mm-hmm. I went straight to the fish counter. I got fresh sea bass fillet um i got some vegetables and um rice and um uh, prawns and i came home i stir fried the vegetables mixed them up uh, with um, some oyster sauce and whipped up a sort of a vegetable stir fry i made the sea bass in my normal um spicy way because i i like spicy food so i spiced it up mm-hmm. we made i made some garlic prawns and some rice to go with it and and that was the first time i think i had fish in maybe 15 years mm-hmm. but but i did that only because i i wanted to tell myself that I don't want any of these toxins. And if I, even if I have to go to the extent of having fish, I will have it <laughs> because I I want to get better. Right. And everybody loved the food. Mm-hmm. Everybody. My husband loved it. Um, my dad enjoyed it thoroughly. And then it became sort of my chemo dinner date. Mm-hmm. So on every chemo day, we make the same food <laughs> and we enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But even on a daily basis, with with your help, I have managed to make s- amazing changes. Like I start my day with strawberry, blueberry, blackberries, um, uh, smoothie with Greek yogurt and almond milk. Um, sometimes I add flax seeds to it. Sometimes I add mushroom chaga powder to it. Sometimes I add two, three dates to it. Mm-hmm. And um, that's my smoothie. Um, I do the ABC juice, which is apple, beetroot, mm-hmm. and carrot with ginger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I also do uh, the green juice with kale and cucumber and celery and lemon and um, lettuce. Um, and somehow I've managed to enjoy them. Mm-hmm. I was, I was, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I, and then I also incorporated a lot of um, herbal remedies, mm-hmm. and I think you do me in the right um way in because i had severe constipation mm-hmm. um and i started with ta- taking senna tea first mm-hmm. then i moved to senecot tablets mm-hmm. uh, and when that didn't help i eventually moved to taking olive oil with two mm-hmm. drops of lemon um that helped for a bit but eventually what helped me the most was castor oil mm-hmm. castor oil has been simply amazing i rub mm-hmm. it on my belly i put it in my belly button and I wrap a a organic cotton cloth around it and Mm -hmm. it works like a charm amazing it works like um, and some of the other I start what you're seeing in acupuncture too right yes I was coming to that that every every week um since my first chemotherapy I've been doing acupuncture Mm -hmm. it has helped me to deal with emotions Mm -hmm. with hot flashes my joint pain Mm -hmm with uh, uh, two other things a neuropathy, neuropathy. Um, yeah. I didn't any, I didn't have any tingling or mm-hmm. any numbness till my ninth ninth or tenth chemo okay and I believe that it was because of that mm-hmm. um, and some other herbal remedies that you you gave me for example I started applying magnesium oil on my feet to sleep better Mm -hmm. the sombre sombre balm for my joints Mm -hmm. i applied every yeah Mm -hmm. every night and every morning Mm, i i made a concoction of oil for my body because my body was so itchy Mm. that every time i would 
scratch, it would leave, you know, blood marks. Yeah. It would not hurting and burning. Mm -hmm. And I mix up coconut oil, mm -hmm. uh, extra virgin olive oil, mm -hmm. a bit of magnesium oil. Um, uh, I added lavender to it mm -hmm. and uh, I made a sort of a bottle and I applied and it's a it very really, interesting you, concoction you made. Yeah, that's really wonderful. I, I remember adding two of two other oils to it: um, coconut extra virgin, magnesium, mm -hmm. a bit of uh, lavender, and um, a bit of castor and jojoba. And jojoba. All these, wow. yeah. And I made a bottle, and I gave out some of these bottles because my acupuncturist she said to me, "Your skin is so soft, ah. uh, and you have." how do you manage i gave out a few bottles to, to a few few of uh, her cancer patients and mm -hmm. and they loved it so i would definitely uh, suggest that you that you try these herbal remedies because so many of these medicines are already going into us and i didn't want to rely on medicine to heal some of the symptoms mm, good point i think so many people listening that I know from patients I talk to feel the same way. They don't want to seek out another medication and another medication or even an herbal necessarily pill, but if they could put their own thing together, apply it topically or something that goes into the food, but that's a beautiful yes. concoction for the skin there. And I think that olive oil. people who have, even drink, you can drink it, help, drinking just, it as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. And also people who are having the same chemo as you do, they're likely to have the same effects. There's a number of chemo yes. as well that give these effects of dry skin, rashes, neuropathy, and then the nausea and the GI issues too. So, and then that feeling of just the fogginess in the head. These are very common symptoms to go through. Yeah. So yeah. anything you can do in your environment or like you're saying with different things, those juices you mentioned, they will pep you back up. They'll make you feel clearer. Yeah. They're also a little bit of a diuretic. So you'll be, you'll do the natural yeah. flushing that a, the body naturally does, yeah. you know, to get the side effects from the chemo out of the system and everything. That's all, I, uh, all that together is so perfect. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't shared uh, something with you that I started recently. I okay. recently, my sister, my niece, actually, mm -hmm. um, she's 10 years old. And she was, um, she does a lot of research on cancer since I was diagnosed. And she sent me um, something called Shilajit. Shilajit is a Himalayan rock. Um, and yeah, and um, I can, I can share the name with you later. It's, oh, it's comes, it's, okay, it's like, it's, it's like a paste. Mm -hmm. It's like a paste mm -hmm. and it looks like tar. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's going to increase your immunity and mm -hmm. it boosts your stamina, gives you energy. I've been having it for three days in the morning. It really tastes bad, <laughs> really tastes really, really bad. Yeah. But I researched it and it works. Okay, it has brought it has brought a bounce back in my step. I can feel the energy. Good to know about. I definitely <clears throat> want to look into that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do look into it. I'll send it to you. And also, I've been having barley powder, mm. um, uh, green powder every morning mm -hmm. uh, with water. Mm -hmm. And uh, another tip would be that if you are suffering from constipation, the minute you wake up, please do drink at least half a liter of water. There it, it is. Yeah. We needed the hydration. It so we should talk about that because you have mastered that. It's very hard for some people to get that much fluid in, but as soon as you get up, you've got to get the hydration in. And then you have your juices and things like that. And um, you have decided at this point now, after chemo, go back for the IV hydration too. I'm sure a lot of patients wonder, it's, should yeah. I do that or not? Right. Because it's back to the clinic. It's, you know, but you feel like it it's been like worth it. Mm -hmm. It is so worth it. I wasn't up for it because I didn't want to waste another day in the hospital. Yeah. Um. So I, I was avoiding it. And I remember you said, just try it once and see how you feel. Mm -hmm. And I tried it. I think I tried, started trying it four weeks back and I haven't stopped. And it works for me. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it, it, my skin's looking better. My body's feeling better. I have much more energy. Mm -hmm. um, my leg pain has uh, gone down from like 10 out of 10 to five out of 10. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm qu quite happy, but, but I, for a person who was not drinking any water, maybe half a glass a day, going to two and a half liters of water awesome. um, ha has definitely helped. The minute I wake up, I have 
um, half a liter. I finish one bottle. Then I have half a glass with, with my barley powder, mm -hmm. then the smoothie, then the ABC juice, and then the middle of the day, the green juice. Mm -hmm. now, then I have Laban, which is like a probiotic uh, sort of uh, Greek yogurt uh, a drink. It's mm -hmm. called kefir, I think, in the oh, US. Yes, kefir. Yes, we, yes, yeah, we yeah, yeah. Right yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. kefir. And then I do take um, this. Um, you had asked me to take some green teas. You said instead of taking a lot of coffee, take green tea to get the energy. So I drink at least two cups of green tea. I do have uh, one espresso and mm -hmm. one regular cup of tea as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, in, in the evening, when I finish my walk, I have... Ha about um about 750 ml of water again so while walking see that's enough so yeah all those flu just the fluid itself like you're saying is so important for so many functions in your body we aren't even really aware of but we can feel the difference with energy and a number of things and then secondarily the, the ones you're choosing after the plain water has so many added helpful nutrients as well. Right. And then the idea of having water with you when you do your exercise, almost everybody tends to drink more while they're exercising. It kind of prompts yes. you to yeah. do it, right? Especially if you're outside, yeah. especially the heat you guys have been having lately. Yeah. So you're prompted yeah. you know, to drink it. So, but I really, especially like how you said, as soon as you get up, you know, and I know some people also, if you're already having to get up at night to use the restroom, Go ahead and drink water. You're up anyway. So go ahead and do that. But if you're, you're not up, having right. to do that, don't, you know, back off. But otherwise, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So amazing. Some of, the, some of the other things I think what, what also happened around my nutrition was that um, because I, I was so aware of the medicine that medicines that were going inside of me, I was feeling the heat of it mm -hmm. all. Um, I incorporated a lot of cool foods. Oh, yes. Uh, cooling right. foods in into mm -hmm. my diet mm -hmm. and um in my culture we, lo we eat a lot of uh, rice mm -hmm. so i started adding a lot of vegetables to my rice for example almost each time that i have rice i add beetroot carrots cucumbers nuts uh, pomegranate and curd mm -hmm. yogurt to my rice is just a really cooling um, you know, it, it it gets digested very quickly mm -hmm. and um, it's so easy to eat and it feels refreshing it in the heat. It sounds refreshing. When I hear you say that, I imagine yeah. people hearing those pe together and it sounds so good. Now, in my mind, just because of my background, I'm thinking there's that vitamin, that antioxidant, that <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yes, that's uh, packed yeah. with all the powerful nutrients you need yeah. as well. Yeah. But also it just uh, on quality wise, it sounds beautiful. There was something else you mentioned the other day you were putting together that I thought sounded really good. Yes. yes. Um, do you remember? You, what that uh, you had told me. Uh, you remember you had told me that uh, which do you know which capsicum has the highest antioxidant and I had said green and you yeah. said no it's the red yeah yeah so I what was I steamed a beetroot okay I cut up some uh, um, uh, red uh, pepper uh -huh. walnuts uh -huh. uh, pomegranate mm -hmm. and um, a red onion mm -hmm. and I tossed a little bit of uh, dressing and mm -hmm. I decorated it with the sides with nachos and I awesome. scooped it and be between me, my sisters, we finished the bowl. <laughs> we finished the bowl. Yeah. So yummy. And I swear each time I took a bite, I felt like I was doing my body a favor. Yes, that's so great. It's that relationship with food like that to know what you're doing. Yes. See, it doesn't yeah. have to be. Yeah. I think so many people are afraid to talk to the dietitian. It doesn't have to be don't eat this, don't eat that, this terribly restrictive yeah. diet and a boring yeah. diet. It can be exciting and flavorful. And that's exactly yeah. what you've done. I mean, that it, then that's how you want to eat, you know. And I was also, also another cancer patient. Uh, she She's my aunt. She's a neonatologist. She lives in Houston. And I've been in touch with her because she's also cancer survivor, a breast cancer survivor. And she said to me, she said three things to me. She said, one is you must eat protein at every meal every as meal. a cancer patient to lose a lot of muscle. So you must eat protein. So for me, in the mornings, it's it was hard to have a heavy breakfast. But mm -hmm. what I did was I made a spinach wrap at home. So mm -hmm. I used to soak rice and um, lentil in the night. Mm -hmm. In the morning, I would put that in a blender, add a bunch of uh, mm -hmm. spinach, 
mm-hmm. and uh, some ginger, garlic, and some spices, mm-hmm. and blend it into a paste. Mm-hmm. Make it like a very thin pancake uh, on the frying pan, mm-hmm. and then make an omelet and wrap it in that. I took it to work. People would just like take it off my hand. I I would just <laughs> give them a bit to try. And say, hey, can you make it for us tomorrow? And it, it turned out to be delicious and it's so healthy, so healthy. So healthy. Uh, so given your permission, I have passed that one on already. <laughs> so Absolutely. Like, oh, Absolutely. I can do that. Yeah. And see that way you yeah, it's so easy. Easy without making a big task of it, you know, it's, Yes. And it's healthy plant yeah. protein, which is very important. We need yeah. plant protein in the diet. So that's really, that's just beautiful. But the good thing is that every week, every week I'm looking at recipes which are healthy that will help me counter uh, all, flush away all the toxins. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, my husband says that the food quality in the house has become much better since I got <laughs> diagnosed. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> you know, on to like also, I know... Um, It's just, there are so many aspects to this journey, as you say, so many that have depth that have to do with relationships. And there's the ones that have to do with just everyday life. What am I going to eat? How am I going to feel better? You're still going to work. You love working. You want to work. You still maintain your obligations at home for your family, for your extended family. Is there a little something you can say for women? Because in the past, um, there's been a lot of push to try to tell women, look, You need to take care of yourself first and, you know, your family is going to have to come second, et cetera. And that's not really not easy for many people to do. They want to do both. You know what I mean? So what what would you say about that? Because you seem to really found a way to handle that and it works. It works for you and works for your family. I I really don't know, Cindy, if I found a way around it. I think it was a lot of trial and error. I, I tried in the beginning, I tried to be. Um, very strong Uh, I would cry every single morning in the shower and um, just cry there because I didn't want my kids or my husband or my father to see my tears Um, so I would just sit in the shower cry away and after I'd finished crying uh, I didn't even have to wipe my tears because the water had all taken them all away I would do my grounding exercise you know the breathing exercise that you had taught me Mm -hmm. every single morning I still do it and I would feel calm and then step out of the shower and you know be ready to face face the day Mm -hmm. and I I did that for several 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 weeks Mm -hmm. I would put my game face on at work and Mm -hmm. pretend like I don't have cancer and you know everything's fine I'm going to do my job the way I'm doing I used to work from home on my chemo days um, and uh, that was it. Um, <clears throat> I broke the news to my kids, but I did not show them exactly what I was going through mm-hmm. uh, because I know that as, a, as, as children, they have to deal with the fact that their mother has cancer and maybe she will be with us or maybe she won't be with us. You know, it it is going through the head. So I... I didn't show that side of me uh, to them. But there came a point where I think I got my first anxiety attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, I was again at work and the phones ringing, WhatsApp noises or the traffic noise or people talking, everything just became mm-hmm. extremely overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I just couldn't deal with it. Uh, it, it was like a point where I thought, you know, I'm not going to make, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to make it. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that's when I sent you uh, the voice note and you sent me back this beautiful gift. You sent me a 14 minute breathing exercise. Mm-hmm. I tried it, but I, I couldn't go through it. I couldn't breathe beyond a few seconds mm-hmm. because it felt like, um, I, I'd lost my grounding, mm-hmm. you know, that I was doing okay. And suddenly everything had gone back to square one and I didn't know where to start. Mm-hmm. And I think that evening I had a bit of a showdown as well with my kids because they were asking me to manage something. And I think I was not my hundred mm-hmm. percent uh, organized that I usually am. And mm-hmm. we, uh, we started off by, you know, saying, 
this was not organized or I don't have I was I was trying to take a nap and I think my son wanted me to do something and I wasn't ready for it and then we eventually started talking and I I broke down and I said to them that you know I'm I'm not the same person that I that I was I'm still your mother but I'm going through this really painful experience and some days I don't feel myself and and as a mother I think I I have tried to be very strong but I feel like I need your help I I really do and um, I just give me give me some time and give me some support uh, for this time and my sons were very 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 you know open and they said you know all you had to do was basically ask yeah. and that, that is something that I was not doing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I feel like um, when I, I was pretending to be strong mm -hmm. even, even with my husband I was you know I, I I was still trying to do a lot of things but then um, for my emotional strength Mm -hmm. I, I felt like I could only break down in front of him, in front of him and not anybody else so that yeah, yeah. you know because he, he would be able to handle handle that and not my kids mm -hmm. right but mm -hmm. since that day mm -hmm. since that day that I opened up to my kids and I was more vulnerable in front of them I feel like that it's it's brought them closer to me mm -hmm. they they know that besides being a mother I'm also a woman mm -hmm. who has to handle work the mm -hmm. work pressures the maintenance of the house um, with kids my parents my sisters all my relationships and there are duties to be done which I'm trying my best to do but mm -hmm. there are days where, where I'm not myself a hundred percent there are days when I feel like it's not this is not me mm -hmm. you know I have mm -hmm. on Wednesday Mm -hmm. I'm on steroids Thursday and Friday. I'm mm -hmm. trying to do basically mm -hmm. fit all my jokes and all my uh, um, high, mm -hmm. high, highly uh, high priority tasks in those two days because I know when symptoms strike Friday night, mm -hmm. Saturday, Sunday are going to be bad days for me. Mm -hmm. And by Monday, Tuesday, mm -hmm. I'm back to work, and I start to feel a little bit like myself. Yeah. And as soon as I about to feel like myself I have the next chemo session again oh, yeah right so mm -hmm. you know just I'm just always riding the wave I'm falling yeah, there it I'm is that's what I want a patient to hear them. yeah because yeah. they're they're listening to how you know how well you're doing and they're thinking I'm not doing this well but they mm -hmm. don't understand you yes. are having those days you're having times when like all, why do all women cry in the shower I hear it all the time I think it's because like you say it's private and we're already wet <laughs> so we cry in the shower but that's yeah. what we do we don't want to necessarily expose it to everyone and we're careful we're yes. careful especially with your children but like you said there are days where you really are not feeling yourself it's normal but you make it through the day but you acknowledge you have awareness of what it is and so this idea that you have to ride the wave. There are days where it lifts and you feel better and it's great. You take advantage of yeah. those days. And there are days when you know it's going to come again, where you're just going to be down here again, but remembering you will come back up again, right? I mean, that's the piece to know because there are those moments. I believe you had one that we shared where you weren't so sure you were going to feel any better. I mean, when you're feeling really that bad, you know, physically, and you feel no energy at all, and you feel sick, and your mind is not like clear, it can feel like you're not going to get back out of that. But when you do, yeah. you can remind yourself from now on, oh, I will, I will come back up, you know, but you have to experience it, right? And you have to like really pay attention. I remember Cindy, you, you said this to me, I, I was discussing something private with you. And I remember you said to me, uh, that th there are days where you will not be yourself and and that, that is okay what you have to remember is that you will be yourself eventually right you know you'll get and mm -hmm. it's and not that you've lost yourself mm -hmm. yeah it's not that you've lost yourself mm -hmm. she's still there and and I see myself bits and pieces of myself here and there but that time I I, I wasn't seeing myself and I it felt like I didn't look, I don't look like a woman. I don't feel like a woman. Mm -hmm. So, so what, what am I going through? Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I can't remember, remind me, it's my 
chemo, chemo brain. What, what did I do? I think I was so low on energy. Mm -hmm. um, that time we had a conversation. I can't remember what, what did I tell you? How did I get out of it? I, I can't remember that. Yeah. Well, one of the main things you did is you allowed yourself to rest. And that's something that's hard. Yeah. Yeah. That was, and I yeah. thought, well, there it is. It seems so simple, but it's not because we're used to being active and busy and being there for the children, there yeah. for the husband. There. But you actually yeah. took some time, some private yes. time to actually get sleep you know, to do that. And then you began to climb your way back to being yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I remember I had my chemo. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the, it was, I was very anxious and it was the day I had immunotherapy also. And mm -hmm. when I get immunotherapy, it's, it's a tough, uh, it's a tough week oh. for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, my youngest sister was visiting uh, and my middle sister was also, has always been here. She's been with me for every single chemotherapy. In fact, she, she, if I'm fighting cancer, she's standing right there with me, fighting it with me, mm. each symptom, mm. every single day. Mm. And uh, the youngest one also came to spend a week, 10 days and it was my 10th immunotherapy and I, uh, uh, chemotherapy, I went through it and I, my body was aching and I was feeling so bad. It was the time that I had that anxiety attack. And uh, that night, all three of us were sitting and sitting on the bed. And <clears throat> I just, I, I went quiet and I said to them, you know what, I, in my, I, I th I'm thinking something and I might change my mind, but right now I'm thinking this, I'm thinking that I'm not going to go to work tomorrow and day after. Mm -hmm. I'm going to rest my body. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend time with the both of you. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, we're going to relive our childhood. We're going to talk about all things nice. We're going to spend time together. We're going to eat yeah. well. Yeah. And we're just, mm -hmm. we're just going to rest. And like you said, a lot of withdrawal had already happened. Mm -hmm. And I needed to deposit it back into myself. Yes, and that's I took right. that, all withdrawal I took, no deposits. <laughs> I I took that time to deposit to invest in myself, mm -hmm. and that week was beautiful. Mm -hmm. That week was beautiful. It made me come back stronger. Mm -hmm. Um, I just I enjoyed every minute of it, and also I lived each and every moment in the present. Mm. I made sure that my sisters were here. We sat down, we put our phones down, we we spoke to each other, even if we just sat there in silence, mm -hmm. you know, just listening to each other's silence. Mm -hmm. But we were there in the moment. Mm. That and really, that's was, so, look at how healing that is, you know, that's so it is so they they fed into you, you know, when you were, you were each yeah. like feeding into each other and loving each other, even in just pre your presence and your silence and like you say, phones are away. We don't want any of the outer, you know, distractions. And so, I mean, that kind of brings us really to our last theme. It just naturally brought us here. And that's something that you've been saying, but in a more accentuated way the whole time. And I believe when you finish treatment, all this reconnection to yourself is going to be even more enhanced and also permanent because you won't be going through the riding the wave of chemo and, and other treatment anymore. No. But this deeper connections you're getting uh, with the with the people you already had in your life, those connections you say are becoming even deeper. So that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so I think um, what I've what I've probably learned the most uh, in on this journey is that um, as human beings, we need to allow each other a lot more grace. Mm. that then we do and don't confuse the word space uh, grace with space uh grace is when you allow when you have the ability to allow the other person to be themselves and to love you the way they want to love you mm. and you open up to receive their love mm. the way that they are showing it the way they are you know mm -hmm. the way they are showing it Mm -hmm. And that is something I was not doing as a person. Mm -hmm. I know that my husband loves me. I know that my sister loves me. I know that my mother-in-law loves me, but I wanted them to love me in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And if it was not happening in that certain way, 
then I was disappointed. Mm -hmm. But somehow with this diagnosis, with this cancer, I don't know how I've changed in a way that I am willing to give that grace. I, I've, I, I mean, with my mother-in-law, for example, the most beautiful connection has happened. Mm -hmm. She has never said to me that I look beautiful. But she said to me, since the day that you have shaved your head, you look beautiful to me. You look beautiful to me every day. She asks me for my pictures and she's never done that in 26 years. Mm -hmm. We we have become so close that, you know, I can, I can talk to her about anything. She gives me a sense of calm. Um, she said something so beautiful to me. She said, I want you to get better because... Um, for a selfish reason because I need you to take care of me mm. you know what I, di I didn't hear I didn't hear what she was saying that she needed me to take care of me what uh, I, I I mean I didn't hear the word selfish mm. I thought what I heard was she loves me mm -hmm. she trusts me trusts you. that's why mm. she needs me yeah she trusts me she needs me and that's why she's saying this to me mm -hmm. I, I, I couldn't think like this before mm-hmm Look at that. You know? So that came around. So, yeah. yeah. So I thought this is the new me mm -hmm. that I'm looking beyond anything negative and I'm thinking, okay, she loves me. She needs me. Mm -hmm. And that's why she's saying something so beautiful to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Similarly with my sister, I've always bonded with my middle sister. I've always bonded with her. But since I was diagnosed, she's been taking me for every single chemotherapy. Sometimes I'm so groggy. I'm talking in my sleep when they give me these antihistamines and anti-vomiting and stuff. And we're, we're chatting and we chat about things, you know, that about our childhood, about our children, about our families. And it feels like, you know, she's always been my best friend, but it feels like I found a new soulmate. Mm. I, I feel like I, she she hears me even when I when I'm not talking. Mm -hmm. She sits with me in the dark. She sits with me in the dark till I'm able to see the light. Oh goodness. You know, and and that is just so beautiful for me. Yes. And for me, this is this is cancer's gift to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I always loved my mother-in-law. I always loved my sisters, but this connection is different. Mm -hmm. With my youngest, uh, with my youngest sister, she said, I, I, last night I told her she left uh, yesterday. So day before last night, I said to her, please stay one more week. I'm just going through my 12th chemo. And she says, she, she laughs back and she says, I'm a prescribed drug. I'm not an over the counter <laughs> drug. So you need, you need a doctor's prescription for me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Such a cute yeah, and she, yeah, she she, uh, she made me massage her feet, and I said, "Look, I'm the patient here, and you're making me massage your feet." And she said, yeah, because you need to stay relevant. You need to stay active. Yeah, hey, wait a minute, here. I got the roles reversed, right? Yeah, yes. That's so beautiful. But I think, I think that, um, I think cancer has opened me up to to. In fact, I would say that everybody should should be open to receive love um, in a way that other people are showing it to them and be more appreciative. That's that's what I've learned. I've self-reflected a lot. And the more I understood myself, the more I started to understand mm -hmm. how other people are and what my relationships are and what they mean to me mm -hmm. and how, how I'm giving and how I'm receiving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope everyone yeah. hears this and then and then puts in the there's a way they can email us and put in their thoughts I would yeah. love to hear back from people on yeah. that because I think those things can really change your life just the way you're looking at that's not selfishness that's trust that's how that person wants to love me. I'm going to receive what they're able, what they their capacity, what they want to give, and just how that's enhanced your relationships and what that does for you in the situation. I just want to say too, and I, I always want to make a point of this, that for someone who's not a cancer patient, 
we have so much to learn from cancer patients. So your experience is teaching me, your experience is showing me as well, pulling away the veil from my eyes, from things that I can now see through you. And the more we bring that awareness out and we listen to one another, it enhances everyone's life. So even though yeah. it's an illness and it's awfully scary and it's fearful and we can, the, the beauty of taking that and then having it produce more love and grace and forgiveness and acceptance and enhance all of our lives. That's, that's incredible. That's beautiful. So I thank you for sharing, you know, and I, that's why I love what I've done for so many years, because I'm actually the one who's getting so many blessings from it. So amazing. Yeah. And um, I, I, I forgot to, we forgot to talk about my friend, my baldy friend. Do you remember? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. I knew he wouldn't quite uh, finish. So that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, it's, 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 um, it's so funny that I never thought that so many people uh, that I, I mean something to mm -hmm. so many people or they, they would show me so much love. Mm -hmm. And there, this colleague of mine, he he used to be in my team at my old uh, organization. And then um, he, we, uh, he left the organization. He went to work somewhere else. And we were still in touch. And he was just, he's like, just like a brother to me. He's a short guy and bald. And, um, uh, and you know, we, we talk quite a lot. And we talk like brothers and sisters. And I, I didn't call him. I didn't tell him that I got cancer because I knew that he would feel hurt and he would be sad. Um, and then after a few months, I thought that, you know, I owe it to him. And maybe at, at that point, I had also accepted it and I was ready to discuss it. So I called him and I I told him and he says, um, he, 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 he just, he said, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. He says, I, I have no words. I, I don't know what to say to you. And that moment was so heavy. And just without even thinking, I blurted out. I said, well, now I'm as bald as you are. So let's both take a picture. Uh, let's both take a selfie and put it on our WhatsApp DP. And he burst out laughing. <gasps> and <laughs> he burst out laughing. And I Oh, thank God. <laughs> At least now, you know, <laughs> that awkward moment's gone. Yeah, that was very, like, yeah. very awkward. Uh, he, I don't, oh boy. Yeah. And, okay. he, <laughs> and he said to me, oh boy, you're still the same. You're still the same. You're never going to change. I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, the bald head becomes, you know, the your ambassador. Yeah, topic of conversation. Yeah, topic of conversation. But you know, even otherwise, Cindy, not just not just friends. The, you know, as as um, I think with with these with the with the cancer glasses on, I've I've met people who I've never known before, and they are some of the kindest people. Like my nurse, my nurse Cindy. Mm -hmm. When I first met her she scolded me she said you're late mm -hmm. and you know other patients are waiting too and you're late and this and that and 10 minutes later we were cracking jokes <laughs> just 10 minutes later we were cracking jokes we were talking and like I said to you this morning uh she, she it was supposed to be her uh, day off and she told me no I can't I I can't uh, take a day off there are lots of uh uh, patients there and normally on Fridays she wears a dress because you know she comes in and out half a day or something so I wore a dress to surprise her I hardly wear dresses so I wore a dress to surprise her I packed an extra pack of breakfast for her and I told her just be quiet pretend like you've come in to give me the drip <laughs> and sit here for for a few minutes for five <laughs> minutes just sit sit and enjoy be present take deep breath take <laughs> deep breaths <laughs> sip the coffee yeah I told her just literally she did it she's like <sighs> And she ate her coffee and, <laughs> and we had such a good time. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've made a friend for life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You you know, and she's my nurse. She's from Zimbabwe. She makes me laugh. Like we crack such jokes. And I look forward to my chemo days just because she's there. That's great. You know? That's how it should be. That's really how it should yeah, be. Bonding. 
Yeah. And then you gave Bonding back to her. That's so the, the interdependence, you know, like you gave back to her. And she knew, yeah. I mean, she has a hard job. It's difficult. She's rushed, et cetera. Yes. And you gave her yeah. a moment to just be quiet, sit, breathe, be in the moment, yeah. you know, and enjoy this with me. That's and I know she loves food, you know. She yeah. loves food. I love food. It's yeah. it's something we connect on. Yeah. And she enjoyed that moment. It was so nice. Mm -hmm. But Cindy, all thanks to you. I swear, I I would, I wouldn't be half the person that I am during this cancer journey if it wasn't because of you. Because you have this sense of calm, your voice, the way you listen to me, the way you respond to me, the way that you explain things to me. Um. It's sometimes it has logic, sometimes it doesn't have logic, but at all times it has this thing which connects with me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I connected you day one. Mm -hmm. I can I can talk to you for hours and hours mm -hmm. and hours and our conversation would not end because you listen to me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you're talking, I I'm listening to you and I'm trying to do the good things that you're asking me to do mm -hmm. because as a person I feel healthier my body feel hel feels healthier my mind feels healthier mm -hmm. I I I look forward to preparing my meals mm -hmm. I I look forward to having conversations with people and connections with people and discussing them with you and deriving greater meaning out of that that's so beautiful I, thank you for your and time life is fuller Mm -hmm. my life is fuller mm -hmm. because of because of you know the way that um I'm able to spend time with you and I'm yes. I'm very grateful for that thank you and that means so much to me especially your life is fuller whereas cancer could rob people of all of that but it hasn't robbed you it's actually enhanced your life but it's because of how you are but we have a beautiful connection and to me, I know you're listening as well. And right away, we're on the same level, just sharing my world, your world, sharing what's going on in our worlds, how we see it. We love to hear how each other sees it and how what's doing to you, how you're feeling. I think that that mutuality, that's the healing relationships that I wish everybody had in, with anyone in their world, you know, their cancer team, especially but um, but when you find it, yeah, you don't you don't let go. It's it's really really special to me too. So and I think I, I what hope. we did like sharing it for others, so they'll look for it or they'll celebrate yes. that they have it in their lives as yeah. well. And they're taking away so many insights and some practical guidance as well as some insights from you. And you know, please everybody who is listening. Let us know, even if you just want to say, hey, I found this interesting, or if you want to ask another question, or if you want to hear more and get back on again. So you, you can see behind me the, the email, the website, creationbalance.com. And then the email is creationbalance at yahoo.com. But all of that is going to be beneath this, whether you see it on Spotify or YouTube, wherever you see it, all that information on how to reach us will be there. So um, yeah, I'm sure we're going to hear from people. I would be more, more, more than happy to answer any questions, to to help if somebody needs any uh, advice or anything. I mm -hmm. it it would be my utmost pleasure mm -hmm. to guide someone or to help them go through this painful journey, mm -hmm. and I hope for them also it it it's. A painful but beautiful journey just mm -hmm. like it is for me mm. there it is painful but beautiful a paradox it is possible so it is possible uh thank you so much again so i hope you don't mind we went over a little but I, there's no way i could stop the beautiful flow of what we had going so <laughs> uh, it was great i love speaking with you and um we'll close it down for now but um everyone if you're interested in seeing us again let us know We'll be waiting sure. to hear from you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Bye.